Uh, welcome. <laughs> It's day four, I believe, um, and very excited today. I've got Sandrine, Shazia, and Anna with me, and I've been really looking forward to talking to you guys. And I think this is one of my favorite bits about this. It's kind of looking, you know, we've talked around a lot of things this week. We've talked around what sort of we feel about maybe mental health and the perceptions um, about the kind of roles that labels are maybe playing. Maybe we've got some judgments around those labels. Um, and then yesterday we touched a little bit upon kind of how it can never, like the outside stuff doesn't, doesn't necessarily, that's not what makes a difference. It's really, really noticing that actually our experience is coming from the inside. Um, and I wanted to sort of, um, go on a little bit more about that because in, in a few conversations I've had, you know, often, and I know this was really, really true for me in the beginning when I first started hearing, I kept hearing people say, okay, well, you just don't do anything, you know? And I was like, well, come on, I really need something to do. What, what do I do? How do I, how do I feel better? How do I settle down? How do I get rid of a busy mind? And, and, and then people would say, well, nothing. <laughs> It'll just, you know, you'll go in and out of it. And I was like, yeah, but I really, really don't think I do go up and down. I really, really, really think that I'm just busy all the time and there's no clarity. Like, you know, it was really hard for me to see it in the beginning. And I think what I've now understand and what I see and what I'd like to explore a bit more is that it's not a case of that, of doing nothing. It's not a case of inactivity and just letting things happen. It's a case of that when you settle down, something will occur to you to do that is the next right thing or the next sensible thing. Um, and that, that's, that's quite a, I found that quite enlightening really. I was like, ah, oh, okay. So it might be that actually it might occur to me or I might, I might think, all right, well, yeah, give this person a call and find out what to do about the next step in a job. Or um, if you're feeling really, really frustrated and, having a hard time in the house with everybody is like, okay, well take yourself away for a walk and maybe that'll, that'll calm you down. Or maybe just, you know, everybody always says kind of sleep on it, isn't it? And I think this is a little bit where it comes from because when you're trying really hard to figure it out, it doesn't always, doesn't always come to you. But when you sort of step away for a bit, something might occur to you and the answer will come, which is why everybody always says, oh, in the shower driving and kind of out for a walk or on the weekend or on holiday when you don't really have such a busy mind inspiration and insight comes through um and that's been quite key for me to notice really is is how that that happens so yeah that's what i thought we might explore today please just to build on what you you just said Bron, i think we can get into the habit of preempting what that insight could be so when you're in when you're in a busy mind and you're feeling like i don't know what what's gonna come up for me and you think because because when we're in that place we kind of we kind of have blinkers on we kind of only see things in our very limited narrow view it's impossible for us to step out of that and think oh maybe maybe when i'm in a better place i'll th i'll feel this way or i'll feel that way or i'll realize i have to make make that phone call to that person about that job and i think that's where we trip ourselves up and if we just notice and recognize that we're not in that place but from that place comes insight and creativity and new thought and those blinkers fall away and we kind of see that there are all these other options then if it starts to feel better and we don't actually have to try and think about what it is that's going to happen there because really what's what's going to happen there is just a massive question mark to us right now i think it's just um can be quite helpful to recognize that, that you don't have to even see the potential answers when you're in that space and, and realistically, we can never actually see the potential answer. I mean, how many conversations have you planned? Have you spent hours and hours and days and days agonizing over? And then you have the conversation and it's nothing like what you planned. Nothing at all. You know, you could never, or like an experience, you know, a sort of even like a lovely holiday family vacation. You can plan it as much as you like, but it's never going to be exactly what's on the paper, what you thought. And what happens, though, in those experiences is we notice that that it all that it all unfolds like in the moment real time things are coming up and i think you know like in our jobs definitely in my job you know when i'm 
And it's, it's funny because I really had a big thing. Like, well, in my job, I know what I'm doing. I understand what I'm doing. But it's still responding real time. I'm still working with people who are responding real time to what's going on for them. And that feels easy. But then in my life, I'm like, oh, no, I, I, I should be a bit more organized. I should be a bit, like, I should be able to control this more. And I, like, definitely letting go of that control um, element because it doesn't, like, it does nothing anyway. <laughs> it frustrate you and it doesn't go to plan that's one of the things that i've really noticed is that i don't need to know i don't need to know all the answers i don't need to know how everybody's going to contribute to a meeting that's coming up i don't i don't need to know because i know that when i'm in that situation i've got everything that i need to handle and and to adapt to that situation to respond to the people that are sharing because that's what we've got innately so I've really recognized through this understanding that previously I needed to know everything. I needed to know how I was going to respond in different situations, what other people were going to say. And, and I was like, what? I don't need to know because I've, I've got everything I need. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of well equipped to cope with that situation. And sometimes it's, it's kind of helpful to look back on, on situations with hindsight and see how you cope through what you thought was going to be a difficult situation and actually you kind of got through it and you're okay. And despite all the kind of previous concerns and thoughts and thinking and insecure thinking that you had before the event, you kind of got through it and you adapted and you coped and you came up with good ideas or whatever. And it's a, it's a, it's a kind of, it's an, an amazing confirmation that that's how it works. That's, we have access to that in the absence of that insecure thinking. We don't need to know, we don't need to know all the answers feels like that's the really key thing that you just said around how it's the absence of insecure thinking so it's not that you've got all of these tools in your bonnet and you need to pick out the right ones and oh we've got we've got all the tools which, which one do I want to use it's it's so much more stripped back than that it's like it's it's not that you you know you can handle it because you can you'll you'll figure it out and you'll come up with the right things because how can we believe like you know I wouldn't believe that if I was told that but it's more this idea of when we're not caught up in our insecure thinking, when we're not caught up in all the, all the noise going on and we settle, there is space. And in that mental space comes insight because we're not crowding ourselves with millions and millions of thoughts. And without that is freedom. And from that comes insight as if out of nowhere. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah and i love like when when you know leela turner as i've heard her describe it as um as like like there's always a first responder you know it's like that that insight and that sort of that 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 thing that thing that comes through that knowledge or that wisdom that comes through is like a like a first responder and you know i the, the only way I saw that I really saw this really clearly when I when I thought about um, the day my brother died and I would never have been able to plan that or think about that in a million years and yet somehow I got through that day and I knew what to do and I knew how to cope and I knew how to react and now that's a really massive example I know but then it's really interesting and, and fun to kind of see how that happens on a daily basis. And, and having been in a really dark place with depression, and obviously we're talking about mental health issues and stuff, but like with depression and anxiety, and sometimes that inner wisdom was literally, okay, get up and feed your baby right now. And that's all I had to do right then, you know? And then what would happen is I'd get, I'd get, all caught up and like well I should be coping better I should be doing this I should be doing but underlying that was something saying okay this is actually what you need to do next do you know there was there was something there driving it and it's I feel like that's kind of you know we all feel like we've got to build or there's always talk about having to build resilience isn't it whereas maybe that's what resilience is is just that something that that moves you forward, no matter where you are with your 
feelings or your thinking or your consciousness there's always that thing that's just kind of okay well let's let's just nudge you this little way go and get yourself some food pick up the phone to phone someone go to the doctor and see if a medication will help you know anything it's different for everybody isn't it which is the beauty of it really it's not prescriptive at all but in my experience it sort of comes with a different feeling even if it's yeah you know, if you have that kind of thought, I, okay, I just need to feed my child. It's the, the, it comes with a kind of an easier feeling in that moment. Like when you're listening to that kind of, um, that sort of deeper inner voice of wisdom or whatever you want to call it, that's just encouraging you through that hurdle. You know, what do you need to do right now that's going to help you find some relief or something? What do you need to focus on? There's, there's a, there's a, however subtle it might be and i think there are variations of this but there's a feeling that comes with that that um if you tune in you can kind of hear that kid this is i know this is what i need to do right this second i know that this is what i need to do and that's all you need to do like it and it and as you say it can be it's it can be something really small but significant it's um but it comes with a feeling i i was um, before the lockdown, I was driving back to London from the countryside and I've been wanting to move out of London for about five years. And I'd been in the, in the countryside for um, know, a long weekend. I was driving back into London and I, was, I hit traffic and I suddenly felt like I almost put my head in my hands. I suddenly felt like a wave of kind of real frustration and depression. I was coming back into London and I didn't, I didn't want to be in London and, and all these kind of waves of not enjoyable feelings were kind of rising up and I felt really stuck and I was like I've got to I, I can't I can't not be in London blah 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 and then I and I kind of really clocked the feeling that I'd suddenly you know I'd been really relaxed in the countryside and suddenly I was driving back and there's just waves of a really uncomfortable um feeling and I started to feel quite stressed and then I clocked it and I and I kind of noticed that I was I was very caught up in in my thinking in that moment and because I saw that I sort of did, and for everyone it's different, but it's almost like I did a kind of side shuffle. Like I just felt like I just stepped aside. And when I stepped aside, I suddenly saw like, oh, but okay, I could do this. And then I could do this. And then I could do that. And actually that over, if I plan that over that period of time, then actually, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can move out. Oh, okay. And then in that moment where I kind of created some possibilities and I sort of listened to that, that deeper, more helpful voice, the, that inner wisdom that was, providing some really helpful creative solutions everything just settled and I started to feel quite excited again and joyous and and it really fascinated me because literally five minutes earlier I'd felt like there was no solution there was no way out and I was driving back into London and everything was looking pretty bleak nothing changed I just did a like a little side shuffle and then everything changed. And I love that how, yeah, as you said, just in a moment, like that, in a second, things can change. And I'm sure I told you uh, before, but when I had this big realization that I didn't have to wait for anything to happen in order for me to feel better, that was like, a big shift to me when I went from being I remember I was on the tube with my husband and I was not in a good place for quite a while and he told me one thing and that one thing just like somehow that I don't know I dropped something and and I was okay and I felt like physically, it's like I, I felt like, I don't know, my blood going all the way back like down and all the way back up. And just like that, I was good. And nothing, nothing had changed. But just somehow, I don't know, I guess it's like everything vanished. And that's something he told me afterwards. He's like, you know, I told you a million times this same thing. But somehow I didn't listen. It's just that they were like coming back from a birthday party anyway, like on the tube and maybe it had a bit more space for what he said 
to go through. Because as Shazia said, if you have all these thoughts, how do you want anything else to get in or get out? You know, like, and I guess I heard him. Um, and from that then I know that I don't have to wait for anything. It will, it's there and I, it can be good. And then I didn't, I almost went back to where I was before because I was like, hold on, no, I'm not feeling good. <laughs> but actually, I was like, well, hold on, I don't have to do that. And yeah, that was really, really powerful for me. Get, going back to um, Bon, your point about the resilience, that's something that I've kind of, I've sort of really experienced is that knowing that I'm always okay, despite what's going on, knowing that kind of on a fundamental level, I'm okay. And on a fundamental level, I've, I've got what I need to cope with any situation that arises. And sometimes I forget it. <laughs> and then sometimes I remember it. And when I remember it, I'm, I feel reassured that that is the case. And when I reflect on difficult circumstances, I can see that that has, that has been true. But just that, that reassurance that you're fundamentally okay and that there is always access to this, um, this deeper wisdom that we all as human beings have that we can kind of tap into at any point in the absence of the insecure thinking that it's always running there. And sometimes it feels a little louder and sometimes it's a bit quieter, but it's always there. And it's, it's sort of there for the, for the listening to. And, and um, yeah, just what I found in my experience that when I remember that, I kind of feel like, okay, yeah, I got, I can do this. I can do this. I can, I can talk in front of all these people or I can, go and do this meeting or I can, you know, do a video that I, you know, don't enjoy doing or whatever it is, I can kind of, I've, I've, I've got this because I've got this, um, this kind of innate strength and, and wisdom that will help me navigate through. And for me, it's always like a, I always see it like a, um, a kind of some sort of compass that's steering me moment to moment. Um, and sometimes I hear it and sometimes I don't, but I always find my way back to it. And I think that can be reassuring is that, that, we, that we, we can find our way back to it once we know that it's there. And I think that's where this, for me at least, this understanding has been so powerful because I felt like I was seeing something that I'd already knew about, but I'd forgotten about and had, yeah, lost track of or, or kind of ignored and, um, and I see that with my clients that when I'm working with my clients, all I, all I'm doing is kind of pointing them in a direction and they, and then they see something that they, they know, but they'd forgotten with that kind of inner voice of wisdom and, and support that we all have. The thing that I find hugely helpful is knowing that all of those things are true, even when I'm not. So you were talking about how you, you know that you have that you're you're fundamentally okay and that you have access to all that insight if only if, if you're you know like when you're ready for listening to it and if we're not ready for listening to it like what I've noticed is that I can be in moments where I know that I'm not in a listening place I'm not in a quiet mind at all and that clarity is just not available to me for whatever reason in that moment I know that I've got layer upon layer of thinking and it's there's a huge difference for me between that happening and that being the end of of my conversation with myself you know like that happening and me being like right well this is no good and uh, I let myself totally get carried away and I and I clutch onto these thoughts like they're real there's a huge difference between that and the moments where I'm getting caught up in my thinking and thinking all these things and then something tells me hang on a minute that's not you, but, but you're here. This is where you are right now. Like, I know that I'm in a busy place. I know that my mind's distorted and that all my thoughts right now are coming from an insecure place and therefore cannot be trusted, but I'm in there anyway. So here I am, I'm just gonna sit in it. But 
to know that I'm in there is the is the battle for me I don't need to escape it and I don't need to kind of reach for something else I just simply need to know I'm in there and what I found which is incredible is that when I know that I'm in there and it particularly comes up for me when I'm when I'm talking to people and if I find that I've just snapped at someone or I've just taken something that someone said really badly it's a really um really nice reminder to be like oh my god I just took that really badly and I'm getting I'm getting this really bad feeling right now I must I must be in a busy mind <laughs> you know I mustn't be in my clarity right now um or I just snapped at someone and they've snapped back at me and I'm really annoyed that they said that to me but the fact that I'm annoyed or the fact that I've snapped is an indication that's my guide that I'm not in clarity right now and it's not that it's not that that takes me to clarity it doesn't but it just allows me, if I know that I'm not there right now, nothing that I think or do, like, why would I do anything from that place? Why would I act from that place? Why would I continue that conversation or continue to nurture that thought about how awful that thing was that I did or that they did? Because I know I'm not in that place. It's just hugely, just the observing, just the noticing where I am and being guided by my feeling is hugely helpful. And before I know it, doing that actually helps me to get to the clarity, which I had already succumbed to the fact that I wasn't getting there anyway. But it's like a really wonderful side effect of having that noticing. And you don't need to do anything in that moment. It just happens organically. There's just an organic shift just from you seeing that something that's all you that's all as you say that's all you need to do and then the mind takes care of the rest and then there's being human and i love what you shared shazia and what i notice myself doing now is having a great idea and it comes with a lovely feeling and then i immediately bundle on a load of thought and i know i'm doing it but that's where i for some reason whatever reason that's where i'm sometimes choosing and Harriet actually in yesterday's conversation was like yeah it's like you hit yourself on the head with a hammer but mm -hmm. at least now I know I'm hitting myself on the head on hair with a hammer you know but like like exercise and eating for me is one of them you know I know that would potentially that would help me feel better you know and I'll have the idea okay great I'm gonna do this and I'm like oh but my feet are really sore and oh I don't want to blah, 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 blah. you know and I'm like okay but that's that's human and I you know I'm, I think I'm beginning to learn to be a little bit more um, graceful with it and also now that I'm noticing one day it'll you know it'll it'll shift it'll shift something I'm um, you know I just I kind of just understand that maybe I'm not seeing it quite quite clearly I'm not you know whatever's happening I'm still not there yet and that's okay too you know because that is human <laughs> yeah I think we all get caught up all yeah. the time how often that happens but yeah just noticing that we are and knowing that it'll pass is quite reassuring and yeah I love that like and that's something that we do use with um, my husband when because now I know if I'm not listening I'm not gonna or if I notice that he's not listening, I know there is no point for me trying to have a conversation because that's not going to go well because I'm going to get annoyed that he's not listening. And and in the end, sometimes I start and I I can see he's not with me. So instead of trying and going there and getting annoyed that, oh, you don't listen to me and da, da, da. Actually, I'm like, look, he's in his own little place. He's not in a good place, so there's no point for me to go there so I live it and yeah I start again like 10 minutes later when he's back with me and that's really really cool and we he'll do that sometime if I go and I start I don't know moaning about something or getting upset about something he's like careful it sounds like one of these swords that you can't trust <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God, yes. But, and that's really cool to play um, like together like that. To, yeah. When, because sometimes you'll realize, but it's cool when the other one catch it for you. And then all of a sudden what you're annoyed at drops. 
because you know you it's not something yeah worth trusting or worth listening to um that's really really cool when you know you yeah you don't have to go with everything every thought you get it's so beautiful because it's like it's like you just see that you don't need to take it personally and the other person knows they don't have to take it personally too and how many misunderstandings and fights happen when we take it when we take our own thinking and the other person's thinking seriously when you think it's something to do with us yeah, that's just that's a beautiful game to play with your husband <laughs> it's great but and that's the thing i think too often and i do that all the time i forget that the other person in front of me is going through their own things and once you're like, oh my God, you need to remember that. And it is, yeah, that changes everything. Like on Sunday, I messaged Bron in the morning because I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry about this and that. And you must be upset. And she was like, well, no. <laughs> but like in my head, she, I was just thinking about Bron. She was upset when in the end, Bron had a lot of other things to think about than me. <laughs> and that's it because you feel you're like, yeah you you're just you and everyone just thinking about you and everyone is just trying to be mean to you or like but nobody I mean not nobody cares but like <laughs> most they all have their own story and yeah we make it up we make up what what people think and it becomes so true for us that we think it has to be true categorically yeah, yeah. made up what's going on in someone else and because we give it so much fuel and continue to fuel it, the more we fuel it, the more real it becomes to us. Whereas, yeah, like you say, everyone's in the same boat. They're, they're, they're worried about what they said to somebody else and <laughs> it just goes on an endless loop. Yeah. I love what you yeah. said though, Sandra, and I really love the playfulness with which you're having these conversations with your husband and just noticing it and suddenly all of the frustration dissipates because you're being playful with it. I love that. And it's so liberating knowing that you can do that in the moment. You, 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 can, you can, yeah, free yourself from that uncomfortable experience about how someone's behaved in the moment. You don't have to, there are other ways to experience what someone said or done. And that can be just so liberating because you can never change the other person or other situation but knowing that you can, in my case, sidestep um, and experience something different. It's really, I think there's just an amazing freedom in that. Yeah, I know for myself, like notice, knowing that when my daughter's angry and not seeing that behavior and focusing on that, you know, I had a lot of resistance to that behavior, as many people would, but when I can see that she's just coming from whatever's going on in her head at the time like she's got herself rightly wound up about something but it's not actually to do with me it's not actually about me being a really bad mum or me spoiling her or whatever it's just it's just an experience and I and I find I can be much calmer around it and it doesn't excuse the behavior it doesn't mean that it's okay necessarily it just means that I can come at it with a a lot more love I suppose and a lot more um Compassion is a lovely word, really, isn't it? Just be a bit more peaceful around it. And not all the time, not all the time. But, but when it happens, it's great. <laughs> what yeah. um, I've really seen over the kind of years of working with individuals and, and teams and, um, is that everyone's struggling with something to a different degree and at different times, but everyone's experiencing difficulty at, at, at any moment. And when you see that and you see that everybody's kind of living in the experience of their thinking you just see people in a different way you just you just not like I, i'm sort of repeating myself but you just really i think it's really it's i just think it's so beautiful that you you just have a complete you can have a completely different experience of someone um yeah when you see where that's coming from mm. for me Bron, when you were saying that Shazia, you're a little bit low. Sorry. Sorry. Is this better? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was just say, uh, saying that something something came up for me as you were talking. Um, just an example that I've experienced recently. Um, when you were talking like about your about your daughter, 
Um, so I'm, I'm back with my parents at the moment. And um, one thing that, that used to really get to me was before lockdown, I would, you know, if I'm coming home late at night, I think I might have told one of you about this already, but if I was arriving home late at night, my, my mum would insist on giving me a lift from the station. It's a 10 minute walk, a very safe place. And for so long, whenever I would be back home and whenever this would happen, I would get so frustrated and I would really feel like this is about me. This is about her not trusting me as an adult, her not seeing me as someone who can take care of myself. All of these things that I attributed to her behavior, to her, to her saying that she wanted to give me a lift when it's past 10 p.m. Um, and so that caused so much frustration. It caused, it, you know, anger towards her. Um, and it was all about, it felt like it was all about me. And through, you know, the most, one of the more recent times that that happened, some, it, it just occurred to me in the moment when she said this, you know, I was kind of like midway through an eye roll. And then, um, and then it occurred to me to, to, to wonder to myself, what, what would make her say that? What must be happening for her to make her say that? And when the answers came, it was stuff like, she loves me. She's worried about me. She wants me to be safe. She doesn't want me to get hurt. And like, I just thought, how, like, how could I meet that with anything other than gratitude and compassion and love? And I just thought it was such a tiny example, but it really brought that point home for me that whatever's going on with me, like the same thing is going on with her. Like she's got all of her thoughts and I've got all my thoughts and it's, it's not about me. And if I can, if I can do my little shift to the side and if I can actually see what's going on from her perspective, it's never what we think it is, or it's rarely what we think it is when we're in that frustrated place. It's not about me. It's about her being a wonderful mum and caring about her daughter. And I consistently met that with how dare you treat me like that. <laughs> Just, yeah, a little example of it. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And at the very beginning, that bit where you thought, what is, what is making her say that? Like, that's the insight. That's the piece. That's the piece, isn't it? That, that fresh thought where you didn't automatically go into whatever else, but you saw that, that fresh thought there and changed your complete, your whole experience. And I guess that's what we're pointing to, isn't it? That, that, that happens all the time and we don't see it but when we do see it we can make use of it and it just changes things completely no matter what situation we find ourselves in Sandrine because that that feeling that you getting angry that wasn't feeling right so that was what we we're talking at the beginning how you know observe how you feel and you know where you are and yeah and then I, how that did that feel when we just saw oh that. god wonderful <laughs> <laughs> i mean you can imagine right it just yeah. it just took yeah, I'm, all I'm, I'm, of like, that baggage away that it's like just it, it just disappeared all the baggage disappeared i have a hundred examples of stuff like that where you just yeah listen listening to that wisdom that thought that came up why what, why would make what would make a person say that and and going with that it's amazing. It's amazing how little I listened, how little I actually really used to listen. And I think that's why we're you, you change. Sorry, go on, Sandrine. No, no, is that it can really completely change your life, your experience of what you leave. Just like that, by playing a bit. Oh, what what if I'm wondering what, what they see? And that's like and you can do that at home, just right here, right now. It's really, really cool. I was just going to say, I think it's um, just those examples. They're just, they're just so beautiful. And I think it's why we all, we all want to show people this. Because I, you know, there was a point where I didn't see that. I didn't know that. And I would have, you know, your initial reaction is what I would have gone with and not enjoyed and had a horrible experience and then spent... A long time trying to recover from the fallout of behaving in a certain way that would have caused the whatever um and there are yeah there were there are so many people who are who don't don't yet know to kind of listen to that 
listen to that voice and or look for it even though it's there i did like i i didn't i had no idea had had no idea and the moment you just know that it's there you look for it and if you if you look for it then you you see something yeah any anything else like a thing all there and that's what's so cool that's what you know going back to to the kind of the sort of heart of this conversation that mind and that you know the wisdom that it's it's all it's kind of all you need you know it's all it's all it's all there it it's all you it's all you need to kind of look out for and sometimes you might forget for a while but at some point you'll remember oh this thing that that's there i might listen out for that and then suddenly something shifts lovely thank you so much ladies thank you for being there. really really beautiful um yeah and thank you for listening it's, it's just lovely and we'd love to connect with other people so if anything in here oh has resonated or you know if you'd like to share anything or ask anything then please do get in touch but thank you thank you ladies okay bye thank you bye, bye. bye.